All right, folks, after a bit of a delay coming out here, we are going to jump into the last series of the night. It is going to be May 7th, Shadows Radio of the Past versus Union back. Gaming, a pretty significant series for both sides. Looking forward to casting it, guys. A two-game series at that, Shadows of the Past versus Union Gaming, here in the ADL, season number two. Thank you so much for joining us. Once again, my name is Mott, with me tonight. Ice Greg, what is hip? How are you doing, man? I'm doing good, you know, and uh, as any good Ice Greg, I had some serious issues with Steam, so uh, apologies for the delay. Uh, I couldn't leave the game, so that was fun, so I'm on a smurf. My name and game might be completely wrong, but it's still me. It was something about a Radiant lobster. Bring in the dancing lobsters is uh yeah. my my general Smurf name. I don't know. I just go with anime names, which whatever. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, it's the easiest thing for me to do. And people are just like, "What's a weeaboo?" I'm just like, just "Fuck off!" All right. How about that? So there. <laughs> I've incited. I've incited it right now in Twitch chat. I'm sure that was probably not the best thing to say. But uh, either Dude, way, yeah. the hell? five seconds remaining. Much flame. We move from one South American squad to another here as Union Reserve Gaming. Time. Well, they're going up against Shadows of the Past. And we talked about how big of a game this is for both squads. Union, they pretty much need to win out. They're 3-7 and seven right now. And seven yeah, I losses. think it's pretty unlikely, but they might still be able to get into it. Right. Shadows of the Past, they're 6-6, six and six, I Dia believe. Team so bang. they have a better shot here. They, they also might need to win out, but maybe not... As much they could lose, I can I guess they could afford to lose a game here and there. If we look at it right now, the top four teams are Sna, who are now twelve and one. Top five, who are eleven and four, with only one game to play left. Ten and a rejects, who are six and two, who have eight games to play left. Uh, Shadows of the Past, who are six and six, five they have four games remaining. to play left. Osiris have played all of their games, and they're six and ten, so they'll probably not be making it. I are three ten. and five, and they have eight games left as well. Union Gaming are three and seven, and they have six games left. So, if we put that all together. It's probably going to be Shadows of the Past unless Isurus and Union can get some victories here and there. Because yeah, and Shadow like lose every game. Yeah, it really comes down to that essentially. So actually, this is a big series. If Union, two, yeah, I think so. If Union two o Shadows, then there's this position where Osiris, or excuse me, Isurus and Union both Dia have a possibility of of taking it that that fourth playoff spot. But uh, you know, Shadows of the Past, they, we had a game last night where they didn't play all that well. I mean, they just got invited to the TF4 qualifiers, and, and these guys are a bit, uh, they're a bit clowny. They scrim a lot, but they're a bit clowny, and uh, they need to kind of stop the, they, they need to take their clown shoes off, if you will, and, and kind of get it together here with this next series, I suppose. So. Wow. Go easy, dude. Is that, is that they're flaming? trying their hardest. Is, am I flaming? I guess I'm flaming. I don't know. Maybe a little bit. Uh, but I, I mean, I definitely agree with you. Like, Five seconds they have. Me. They definitely did not play their best in the games I saw yesterday. And uh, they seem to be experimenting with a couple new heroes. They're a team that heavily leaned on Centaur. And well, pff, now he looks smart as they still picked it. So, But we have been seeing Nayrock playing like Marana. He's been playing a couple different offlane heroes. Yeah. But uh he think he played like a battle nature's prophet last night it and that didn't work really out. work out it too well work out, no. and uh shadows of the past just trying to find their comfort zone in this new patch so i want to i want to start off with union game by saying uh they've got a stand in picking well that and <laughs> the fact that that stand in used to be on force for revenge which revenge. by the way their carry player ewo is now on force for revenge so they've swapped carries here and pick. uh it's really unfortunate. We can always talk about Force of Revenge, and a lot of people seem to be hit very hard by this. People that I didn't expect to like see sympathy. Like, I, I I knew that Cap watched them a lot, and I knew I casted like the game I casted a long time ago with LD was like Alliance versus Force of Revenge, and I know he watches. I know he enjoys watching them, but everyone else kind of came down out of the woodwork, and they were like condoling Smash and just being like, Ten "Hey, you guys, remaining. it's really unfortunate you couldn't play, but." You know, it is kind of sad. Yeah. But. I mean, it comes down again to Valve just does not have... They just don't communicate very well with anyone. Well, they didn't kick them. Time. They didn't kick them. They just... Uh, they just uh, I mean, they either they had the choice of playing with Benjaz and playing the qualifiers or not playing with Benjaz and refusing to play. And that's what they chose. So I think maybe Revenge had some other priorities that were maybe missed but then again i guess if you like if you kick somebody and then like you expect to play qualifiers with them how are you kind of Ten going to repair that relationship remaining. i suppose so yeah things just kind of blow up five seconds remaining. life's hard man it is i guess we're getting a little too deep here so we'll go back to the draft uh who cares about the draft and, yeah who I, cares I, fuck it dude we're not gonna we don't need to talk about <laughs> let's the draft. not talk about the draft let's talk about everything <laughs> but the draft Jeez. but i don't know man i everyone's just i'm getting really excited for ti it's like 
It's getting close, man. Well, the qualifiers are getting close. I don't know what I'm going to do, honestly. And there's just, there are some really cool, really cool things that are going to be playing out. Uh, mostly, I am super excited. After casting a bunch of the China games recently, I did like a couple games from WPC the other day. Yeah, I remember, yeah. China qualifiers look so even. I have no idea who's going to win. Yeah, the day before that, I or two days before that, I did a WPC as well. I think you said you were like you, you couldn't do that, and you, I was asking if you were around for it. But yeah, I did the next. I did like two days the next day. Yeah, and uh, I think we but both like, saw some really good games there. Yeah, like IG lost to HGT, I think, yeah. like lost the game, and Tong Fu beat Vici a game. Like the China scene seems really competitive right now. So. Do you I'm think it's do you think it's a lot like TI2 where these Chinese teams are going to come in and dominate or do you think like these American teams oh, are like I don't know teams? man every some teams like the really good Chinese teams I watch them and their movement seems so perfect right. that I have no idea how any western team is going to get pickoffs on them the way they rotate Ten is like seconds, unreal really? sometimes they'll TP like four heroes to protect the solo Five offlaner seconds, really? and it'll work but I don't know, man. Maybe the way they play is a little bit too conservative. I He's definitely think tight. that a team like EG can farm the map more efficiently than a Chinese team. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It seems like it's going to be really hard to pick them off if they keep playing the way they were. Uh, the, the teams that come to mind that really do that well are Vici and DK, um, who I think, in my opinion at least, are the top two Chinese teams right now. So I don't know, man. I'm really looking forward to the qualifiers. I think everybody is. Honestly, like, and not just the, the Chinese qualifiers, but really all of them. I've watched enough of the games from half of these teams to be familiar with most of them. For the American qualifiers, I know pretty much I'd say everybody, and I probably am one of the most knowledgeable people when it comes to the scene, you and I, I'd say. So I'm looking forward to just being like, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what these teams can bring to the American qualifiers, but I'm also excited to see the SCA qualifiers. I'm excited to see Team Dog in the Euro European qualifiers. So, I, like, I... I'm like I'm ready for you know me to fly out there, but I'm also like I don't even know, man. I'm kind of nervous. Like it's such yeah, a I'd agree. I mean, I think and... I, I think me and you Dirty are we we uh, cast more NA than just about anyone now. Me, you, and Kyle guys. Yeah. So yeah, I'd say we're uh, I think we're on top of the NA scene. I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. Turns out as well. I mean, we have had a lot of movement lately. Obviously, with there's some uh, some words about Union Gaming possibly heading out of the qualifiers. Uh, nothing's been confirmed yet, but well, we'll see. Shadow of the Past have made it in, and things have just been topsy turvy in those qualifiers. And now I guess that brings us back to these two teams. And uh, Shadows of the Past, well, this, sec this second man phase is actually taking quite a while. Yeah, and man. I, I thought we were going to get through some like, like a ton I of things. I thought we were going to be like done with the draft. Yeah, but it looks like that's well. not the case. Sand King and Central Warner for Shadows of the Past, two very strong heroes. Uh, both need that blink dagger early as possible. And. And when they get it, they can start really contributing to team fights. Shadow Shaman and Lycan, a uh, bit of an old school 6.80 pickup here. Lycan can get shut down, especially on the Radiant side, I think. And we Dying talked about it a bit in that last series. And I think with Lycan, like, that change is actually bigger than we anticipated. So being yeah. able to shut Radiant him down when he's got Shapeshift up and not having that extra health is kind of huge. With Rubik, that helps a lot. With a Sand King, with Burrow Strike, with the Centaur, with Stomp, with Blink Dagger, they have Lockdown, and that's exactly what you need. But so does Union Gaming as they pick up the puck to go in that mid lane and have uh, probably a decent time depending on who you know Shadows of the Past picks up here. So, all right. There's a chance that this could be uh, there's a chance this could be an off lane puck. I think off lane puck is actually quite good. I've been watching uh, as much of it as I can and. It's I don't know. It seems good. Like you have really good. You have a really good tool set for not dying in the lane. Phase shift is really good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, more than likely it's going to be that mid lane puck. But Ten I don't know, man. I, I'd like to see teams sort of experimenting it with a bit more. EG is really one of the only teams that have really seconds, embraced okay. the off lane puck. Universe plays it quite a bit, but. I don't know. It seems to be quite good. Like Reserve you have really strong abilities. Once you have level six, you can easily rotate out of the lane and gank. Um, obviously, it's a bit harder to get the blink dagger, but I don't know. I really like it. Pick. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you completely. Um, but the Ursa pick, dude. But Ursa. Like that's that's all I got to say, man. It's just like there's an Ursa now for Shadows of the Past year. This year, I feel is pretty good. If you have the lockdown yeah, to I work agree. with him, if like because you can kite him very very well. Hmm. Um, he'll probably need to be KB this game against uh, Dream Coil and Rasta. And, mm -hmm, absolutely. Uh, a Blink Dagger for sure as well. Like, remaining. Uh, and on the Dire side too, he's going to be going for Five Rush really early on. Remaining. I think Union Gaming are going to have to put a little bit more effort into just trying to find out whether he's rushing or not and go from there. Reserve so time. this might be rough for Union Gaming. Maybe. 
Have you experienced? Have you experimented at all with the new Ursa, with the new orb change? Um, no. I've I've had some friends that have, and I've played it a bit, and uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. You can Roche noticeably Dying earlier. I mean, down. you can Roche at like level three or something, but it's uh, hard and iffy. Not advised. Like if you get bad bashes, you just die. Yeah, it's yeah, actually yeah. it happened to me once. And then and now I wait till level five. But uh, I, I mean. I don't know. I, I really like this hero. I agree. I mean, with the proper remain. setup, he does just un, just ridiculous amounts of damage. Like, Five he can tear through remain. supports like nothing. Puck, same situation, no HP. And uh, they've got Centaur, Sand King, and He's Telekinesis. Yeah, that helps set it up. And if Rubik's able to steal a CC spell from Shadow Shaman, Radiant team this Ursa could easily go to work on them. I think the Ursa has to go for Earthshock, though. Like, in a professional oh, yeah. setting, you, you rarely see Ursas go for, like, Fury Swipes and Overpower. Like, it just, like, doesn't happen. Like, you need Earthshock because it's so good for ganking. Unless you're just going to sit and farm. Ten if that's the case, then, yeah, I guess you can get away with over, over, yeah, Overpower guess, and Fury Swipes. But I don't know. Earthshock's so Five good. It's a really good ability. The slow is, like, Six it's second cooldown. ridiculous. Yeah, and you can spam it. It doesn't it's cost that much time. mana. You know, I think it's kind of weird. Like, people did all this weird theory crafting on what orb you should get. Vlad's is still really good on this hero because yeah. the mana regen you get is really good for Earthshock. The benefit, honestly, is that you can buy the mask first. I think it is a big difference because then you can, you know, if your lane is going really hard, you can easily just retreat into the jungle at really no penalty uh, and continue moving on. In the late game, I think the orb is actually kind of big. A lot of people have been talking about Desolator. Uh, I don't know if you really need don't a damage, actually though. think it's good. Yeah, I, there's really no reason. I think Scotty is like a hundred times better. Yeah, it's good against BKB carriers as well. So I agree. Uh, that's kind of where I'm at with the Ursa change. But I'll be interested to see how Shadows of the Past play with it and how they build it. Ten to me, I mean, this remaining. pretty much just looks like an easy lane Ursa. I guess there's like a possibility Five they aggressive try lane remaining. this with Urshock, Telekinesis, and then Burrow Strike, but. Bro Strike's range is so ass that I'm not sure it's doable. I mean, with Telkinesis, you can set it up. Obviously. Yeah, with Tel that's true. That's true. Yeah, I didn't really consider that. But uh, they beat the Beastmaster. Yeah, so Beastmaster is probably going to be mid. Centaur War Winner, either solo safe or solo off. And then Rubik, Sand King, Ursa, Aggro Try or Defensive Try probably coming out there. And I've seen like Korok do a mid lane Ursa, and he did okay. It was against an SF. Yeah, mid Ursa is pretty good. It depends on who you're matching up against, obviously. And I don't think he really matches up that well against a Puck. Uh, let's be honest with you. It's, I, it's, I think it's better than you'd expect. Yeah. Because you can just Earth Shock and then hit him, and he has to leave because he's true. got like no HP. That's true. This I could actually this. Well, now that you mention it, I feel like this actually could be a a mid lane Ursa, but we'll see. It depends. They could mid lane. Oh, they could mid Ursa. Easy lane the Beastmaster, aggressive trialing with Sand King, Rubik, Centaur. Yeah, that could be good. It's pretty spicy. Yeah, that's no, really... I, they, they have Nayrock playing it. He's usually yeah, the solo laner, not. so I, I'd imagine he's going to be just soloing up the Centaur. They can lock him down, potentially, though. They have Visage, they have Shadow Shaman, and Lycan is not the best for killing him. Bouncy Hands are probably uh, going to be in the off lane. They can solo save him if they want to, but... This is kind of a weird pick for me, this Bounty Hunter. I, I saw Pycat do it this weekend, and you might have yeah, been there with me. Uh, yeah, you were. You were there. and He just, like, went ham, though. I'm not sure that was a proper showing. representation. Yeah. yeah, who knows? <laughs> I'm not sure. But, I, I mean, how does it really match up with their lineup? I guess they just pick and push. I think I think it's because... It, it, like, I guess, if, you, I guess if this, this is the mid lane puck, so... The I'll biggest problem, I think, with their team right now is that Lycan needs to get that Necro online early. And if he's farming, that's fine. But, like, if he's involved in track kills as well, like, he's going to get that Necro up so quickly that there's no yeah, way they true. can't push down towers. Um, plus, ganking is going to be huge. It just depends on how quick he gets level 6. But we have to wait and see because Angel's not in the game. And I'm not sure if he's the off laner or if Sidoral is. Sidoral is usually the mid laner. Um, and, mm -hmm. yeah, he'll be picking up the puck, I imagine. Excuse me, I, I imagine. But, um, yeah, there's... Yeah, I don't think there's any way. I mean, I guess actually you could do like a mid bounty against Beastmaster, but I don't know. We're we're getting into the depths of theory crafting now. This is what happens, man. When there's a pause, when there's a long draft, it's just like oh. I love, dude. I love just just thinking about the different things you can do. I mean, mid bounty hunter is not nearly as bad as a lot of people would initially I've, scoff listen, at. Listen, you get insane levels. I've seen the one and only Aaron Spitwatstern do it in oh, games, Jesus. and he's like he's one ham like. I guess play Dota longer than most people. Uh, he's right around there with fear in terms of how long he's been playing the game. So it's pretty legit, man. I've seen it before. and It's just like so good just to be able to get levels and then just rotate and gank and have the ability to gank through mid up into the top or to the bottom lane and just be able to like get room control on top of that. Like Because the problem is with Bounty Hunter, he does have a bit of a mana issue. I mean, to a certain extent, but 
Um, yeah. Who knows, man? Well, Angel is just Why is MIA. It? No one's saying anything either. This is we have no idea what's going on. Um, we'll just we'll shoot out the good old question mark. That is universally understood. Where the hell is your fifth? Well. Oh, look at that! You get the love from Osh. You you got it from Narok, dude. Yeah, we I win. I'm I'm calling him out, man. I'm I'm calling him out, dude. <laughs> it's just like uh like come on, dude. Come on, please. <laughs> man, I oh man, I was gonna say the same thing you did, but oh god. I mean, he got me, dude. He fucking got me, man. All right, guys. I, I while we've got a second here, I wanna I wanna get a second and just say it's been an absolute pleasure casting the ADL for you. This is no, one of the last few days. Fun. What? I've had a lot of fun this season, man. Oh yeah, I think we all have. I think it's been such a pleasure just not only casting for everybody out there, but like with you and Coddle guy, it's just been an absolute pleasure because you and I haven't really gotten all that much of a chance to cast this year, except for the CDL, which. Let's be honest, man. It's been a shit show. <laughs> it's a bit of a shit show. No offense to CDL, but... <laughs> I mean, I'm completely... Guns out. CDL has been a shit show. Yeah. Um... All across the board. But, uh, yeah, this is our, this has been our... This has been our big thing. Yeah, it has been. And really? Unfortunately, we don't really know what's going on with the D2 Canada Cup. Oh, God. That's also been a bit of a... Not a frustrating experience, because working with Bill and Anthony, those guys are absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, but we really just... Valve is... They're not oh, on their A game right now, man. I gotta. I don't want to. Not no shots fired at Valve because I don't want to like. Dude, I'm shooting shots at them too. Fuck it. God damn it, Valve. Why like, don't you just talk to the goddamn no. people who administer your fucking game? Dude, dude, no. It's unreal. No, the qualifiers though, dude. Dude, it's so frustrating. They just like enact these rules of God, and it's just like, fuck, man. Yeah, I. Listen, listen, dude. I. I don't want to piss them off though. Because I love Valve, and I love everything they've done for this game, and really for my life, honestly, like, without Dota, I don't know where I'd be, but, uh, I guess it's a bit sad to say, but... I'm, dude, I'm there, like... Whoa, whoa, I'm being flamed by Vic right now. Hold on, dude. <laughs> oh, man, well, we got more DCs, we've gone the wrong way, and, uh... We're now down two players instead of just one. Shout out to Vic Ramond. Um, I you, love Vic. Were you there when we were having the conversation about Minami Night at MLG? Uh, no. Yeah, I think you were doing like picture stuff. Like that's what yeah. she missed out on, man. It was like me, Aaron. It's like I love going to events and shit, but when you go to do like coverage, it is so fucking stressful. Yeah. But I don't know. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> it is fun. I I gotta say and. The people at the I'm I'm starting to warm up to the fact of like actually like talking to people at events. I'm I'm one of those like socially awkward people, so it's just like, do I mm -hmm. go up to him? Do I say hi? I'm a big fan. It gets to the point now where it's just like you have to go and say what's up. Yeah, yeah. I I, I I've known these guys I guess long enough. So I mean I I'm gonna have to be spending two and a half weeks with some people anyway. So better just get my just get my balls out of my mouth or something. And what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that was about, dude. Uh, <laughs> no comment. Please don't report Ondo this stream. <laughs> I'm gonna Ondo. No comment, dude. All right. Well, listen. We're trying to entertain uh, you guys. That's what I'm. That's uh, what I'm doing. So. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, yeah, the Canada Cup. For anyone who's wondering, uh, it's super up in the air right now. Uh, basically, the way that they structured everything is relying on the ticket, which is completely reasonable. Um. A lot of people rely on tickets to get income for prize pool and paying the people that do work for them. We have an agreement with them for the next season, and we were really excited to do it. It's basically the, it's a very similar set of teams to the ADL. And, you know, these might not be the top tier teams in the world, but I love casting these guys. So hopefully I mean, that gets resolved in some fashion, but Valve kind of uh, screwed the pooch on that one. Greg Grant has always told me to keep it real. And, uh, you know, I keep it real when I'm casting in Adota for the most part. So, oh, dude, I'm I'm there. I uh, I keep it real. How do you feel about Grant these days? Grant? I like Grant, man. Yeah. Grant is one of the only people that I know that actually fucking cares about Dota. So he does. I gotta. God, why does it, it? It's it's fucking Grant, Grant, and RTZ, man. It always comes back to those two people. I feel like. I, I guess people do, people that are new to the Dota scene don't really know Grant. 
And then if they do know them, they know them for the wrong reasons. They know, yeah, they know them for the wrong reasons. But I have to say, like, like Grant he might, actually he might put Grant on the show. Yeah, Grant gives a fuck about Dota and the players in Dota. So he might that's... put on the show, but he's actually a really <sighs> genuine and nice person when you get to meet him. So I will keep it real. What the hell is Union's team? I don't know, man. I we've I think we've done a nice job um, filling the, the gap here and bantering. I think that's what most people want out of casters is banter. <laughs> Get him. Like dude. they haven't even said anything, dude. We got we got games to play. We do have games to play. It's very true. Uh, we're we're a bit behind schedule. The, the game was supposed to start at nine p.m. Um, the draft might have, but the game certainly didn't. Uh, it started a bit late, and that was you know I can't even complain. That I don't even know why I'm flaming. You guys were waiting for me. Shit. Oh well. I'm this here. Has been a, this has been a funny. Uh, this has been a funny like ten minutes or so with you, Greg. I, I gotta say. <laughs> Kyle and I always like keep it super uh -huh. professional when we're playing. Oh yeah, I'm not. not but about... you and I, we just we keep it real, man. I, dude, I am, I am. A... <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> God, are you looking at chat right now? Uh, the uh, not that chat, the other chat though. Oh no! What happened? You're getting flamed. Uh, they they saw the boss in mouth quote. <laughs> oh Jesus! Yeah, it's not looking good, dude. <laughs> Shit. Um, well, man down for Union Gaming. Oh, wait, he's back in he's the back. game. We did it, dude. Angels made it. This wait, isn't bad. This is also not, not the first time Angels had a bit of an issue in terms of his. Uh, I I don't know. Whatever his internet, his computer, what have you. So. Uh, dude, all right. I got another thing to say to you. I'm gonna rip that fucking term out of your vocabulary. What? What's what term? have you? You and my, and you got Coddle to start saying it now too. Yeah, I gotta what stop. You fucking say it right, every you, time you say that. What else do I say, Greg? Get a squirt gun and just fucking. Shoot I actually you want it. to know what else I say a lot of because I really that's, need to that's stop. That's the big thing. Is what have you? Yeah. That yeah. And, uh, so on and so forth. You motherfuckers. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. I do say that a lot. What have you and so on and so forth. Shit. <laughs> I'm guilty of this when I main cast. I say quite like way too much. I think. But quite's a good word though. Everyone uses quite. But God fucking damn it. Um, Do a shot every time Mott, Mott says those. Man, we're gonna you'll get die. This. You'll just Dude, die. We're gonna, we're gonna get this stream. Listen, link. okay. Shot There's every time we talk about Grand Grand and RTZ. Shot <laughs> if we use a, a phrase we always use. Shot if I say it's looking dire for X team, um, like the Radiant, um, or dire for the dire even. Um, shot if I tell a story that's really dumb. Um, Shot if you say balls in my mouth. <laughs> that's finish your drink, dude. That's finish your drink. <laughs> that's finish your drink and then take three more shots on top of that. Oh, man. This is America, man. They can handle it. <laughs> it's America. Home Wait, of they can handle the drinking. Um, what else? What else? What's, what, what are better drink rules? Shot Shot if there's all chat uh, during the game, not like during like a pause time here. It's got to be during the game. Shot if the caster's all chat uh, at any point in time. Um... We're missing a lot, man. I don't know, man. Ma, there's no one I'd rather be paused with right now. Just me and you. Yeah, wow. Just trying to fucking get Angel too, back dude. in this goddamn game. Me too. I feel the same way. <laughs> oh, man. Let's go back to talking about Hearthstone. I got to say, I've been no, playing Hearthstone. No, no, no. I played, I played some Hearthstone in between the last couple of games, you know? And uh, I crushed. I'm playing. For anyone who's curious, I'm playing the uh, the Huntard deck. Nobody it's cares. Nobody cares. Hey man, dude. I played I played Hipster Grandpa last night. It was fun. Um, you play? Wow, that guy plays like every fucking game, man. Because we yeah, I was I streaming. I'm, I'm, I've been streaming a bunch the last couple days, and I'm uh, gonna try to keep that going. Nice dude. Um, I've been playing a lot of Smash, and I've also played with Hipster Grandpa. Who were you playing last night? Who were you playing? Oh, that's I was who playing, playing with Hipster with. and Sean. Which, by the way, they're brothers. I didn't know that until I didn't know that last night. Well, whatever, dude. But uh, yeah, no, I I played a lot of melee in the couple the last coming days. And I've I've realized that as much fun as Marth is, I feel like I'm a better Falco than a Marth. And you're probably like, I don't even know what that. I mean, I know the very I know the basics of like competitive Smash, but I'm not very good. <laughs> I know like how everything functions. However, my roommate's girlfriend brought over an N64 last night that we get to keep for the summer. N64 so, Smash is pretty big. Fun. Fucking fan of that. I mean, yeah. it's probably a little bit more casual or whatever. But, uh, it's uh, I don't know. Well, it's not. It's, know, it's, it's, not... A, it's about as deep because they have L canceling or I guess Z canceling yeah. as it's called. And if you learn that, you'll be doing okay. I don't know, and man. Also, 
Conan uh, people. I have a lot of friends that play N64 Smash. I wish they played Melee, so. but that's fine. We are going into the game finally, Holy dude. We made shit. it. We resumed. We did it, dude. I don't know if you were alt-tab, but we're here. Um, dude, this game, we're only 50 minutes late. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's only a two-game series. No best of three here, guys. Remember, this is a very, very important series for both of these squads. For Shadows of the Past, the dire team... Risk is going to be up on the Ursa, and they're going to do some five minute aggression down bottom. Well, if Chicken MC hashtag Thug Life with a Y and uh, dot I win tournaments, he's on the Beastmaster. Narok dot One Piece Poop Squad FNS, which I believe means fans, will be on the Centaur War Runner. Joik, formerly of the Jorkonauts, will be on the Sand King. And Last It Magic, also known as Four, will be on that Rubik. Yeah. And we were uh, we were talking before this game started, but I wish they would use their real goddamn names. Anyway, quick uh, intro here for Union Gaming. We've got the stand-in Ben Haas, or is this this is I is this? It's this? Ben. That's Ben Haas. You're right. Okay, Ben Haas. I thought that maybe that stood for something else. On the Lycan, Jericho on the Shadow Shaman. Uh, oh dear, Zender Liz. Yep, that's on it. the Visage in the mid lane. We've got Sidoral on the puck and all the way in the top lane. Angel, the reason for our our plight, our D our DC, our lewd language. It's Angel on Bounty Hunter. <laughs> I just keep going back to that one thing I said, man, and I just can't... <laughs> <laughs> can't unsay that shit, man. No, I definitely can't, dude. This is the internet. Someone's going to highlight that, and I am fucked. The but, uh, yeah, we are going to jump into the game. It looks like it's going to be a defensive try lane down bottom with this Lycan, and well, off lane for Narok. He should be okay, unless he gets, well, shackled up, and they can soul assumption him down with that Visage. It's going to be rough, but... For the most part, he should be just fine with that nice strength that he's got going his way. Top lane, defensive try lane coming out as well for Shadows of the Past. This is good because this allows Joy to head to the jungle, stack it up, and get a very quick blink dagger. You like to see it around the 14-minute mark for a support Sand King, but a bit later is not bad either. Um, and Sandstorm is so good because of it. I mean, that's the reason why you picked the SK. But uh, it is going to be the Beastmaster mid, and with Wild Axes, this might be tough because... Sidoral has phase shift. It's a very short cooldown. So even if you There's cancel the no animation, no. I mean, no way to dodge axes. If you're if you're in if you're in the spot where axes can hit you, I'm almost 100 percent sure level one phase shift is. Oh, you're well, wrong, I'm dude. Fucking wrong. You're wrong, I dude. lost. I lost. Wow. Never mind. I'm impressed. I can't believe Sidoral dodged that first try. No, no warm up needed. And he's oh. going really aggressive on Chicken MC. Nice face shift wow, too to avoid that, that tower damage. Incredible play. Holy yeah. shit. Sidoral is, I think, this is one of his best heroes. And we, we see him play other heroes a lot, but Sidoral, he gets a lot of flack from doing some questionable plays. You've got to be. Oh, you've Jesus. Got, you've got to be. Dude. I'm about to all chat. Um, it's going to happen, man. You know what's going to happen then if you. Well, you do. I need to go get a beer, apparently. <laughs> I don't have any, I don't have any alcohol. The chat's playing, man. I feel like I'm left out if I don't get to play. And type 1 if you're playing the drinking game. We'll see in about two minutes' time if that's the case. We should make a full rule set for this. That's really where it's at. Uh, it's a little late for that, though. All I right, guess we'll we can do for the playoffs. For the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. Even for TI4 cool. qualifiers, maybe. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's been, uh, I guess, a decent game for the rating team right now. It's a little early. Telekinesis now and Angel. There's the bro strike. The dust is up as well. Do they have enough damage? Fury Swap's doing a lot of work. The right click coming through. And that's going to be last hit magic. He'll get the first blood. And that's the problem with the Bounty Hunter, man. Like, if you've got enough lockdown, all lane Bounty Hunter is pretty shit. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Narok is going to stomp up. He'll be fine. It looks like he'll survive, so. Yeah, the difference here. Bounty Hunter has 492 HP. Centaur has 600... Excuse me, 644. So, uh, therein lies their issue. At these early levels, this isn't a pub, man. They brought centuries and dust. You could argue that even at a pub, they bring centuries and dust as well. I, I guess if you're playing That's with true. like well-coordinated people, or if you're above four and a half k, uh, which we're not. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, no lying here in the ADL. Absolutely Only not. We keep it honest. Roots. We're honest, Abe's, if you will. Um, Chicken MC. A bit of danger in the mid lane, though. Yeah. Oh, he's just orbs. He could die here. Cinderell. Oh, Bro, strike. He's got phase shift. No, oh my God, what a phase shift coming out. Ah oh, man, and. He had to time that perfectly, and he did. Well, Nayrock is going to fall in that bottom lane, and as I was saying, well, maybe the bounty tender was going to have a rough time. He, he actually, Nayrock does go down. So, all right. Oh, Sidoral has made a new fan, man. Two phase shifts that are that literally blew my fucking mind. That second one, he anticipated the burrow strike, and god damn. Yeah, that, I mean, I, I get that a bit. 150 ping, and he just did that. That's true. I think that's really the impressive thing. But, uh... What's up? 
I mean, it's going pretty well for the Radiant Angel. What are you rotating mid for, man? He wants this kill. He has level 1 Janata. He's got level 1 Shuriken Toss. That is not going to be enough. Angel's going to dive this. Illusion your orb. Dodge it. Nice. All right. Angel just rotated down mid. Uh, Leash experience for Sidoral for about a minute or so. And now he'll probably have to head back home because he has no health. He can maybe tango up, but that's probably a waste. So... Yeah, good. Uh, that was good play from Chicken MC. Just making sure he. Uh, wow, this. Oh, he has a, must have a bottle coming back out. He does. Okay. I was gonna say a little greedy to stay there with one tango, but he's got a full bottle coming out, and uh, he's gonna be hoping to get the four minute rune here with a little bit of help from Joik on the Sand King. Yeah, yeah. Rune control might be difficult for Beastmaster, but when you have a support to help out, it absolutely can go your way. And they don't have any actually ward on that top rune spot, bottom rune spot. No, sir. They don't have a ward anywhere. They set their ward up top here in the lane. Oh yes, And he does. where did that other ward go? Did they counter ward it? They must have. Maybe it was top. Uh, but it's and here. This area. Maybe yeah. They might have counter warded it coming out. I did. Donnie or centuries though is the question. I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. So yeah. I mean, I think they just might still have one on them somewhere. I'll investigate. I'll get back to you. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where it went. Oh, nope, uh, no wards on anyone. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but I, I don't know. I looked at chat by the way. We have quite a few people playing the drinking game, so that's good. Hopefully you guys Probably. don't die. Yeah. Excellent. I, I saw at least twenty ones. So. Condolences. Yeah, your liver might be in some trouble. But mid lane, she can see. Going for this again. Wow, this is really aggressive. They, if they don't hit the orb, they can't get this yeah, kill. Yeah, they need to hit it. That's that's not what you wanted. Axe is going to go. Angel's going to oh. get hit up with them. They have detection. The TPs are a bit too late. It was from yeah. Nayrock who TP'd mid. He actually didn't have any detection at all. But yeah, that that is a lack of experience and gold and whatever going for Angel, essentially. So that's not good. Yeah, absolutely. And. Angel not getting those kills just... I mean, I don't really know what he's hoping to do with level 1 Janata. That's just not a very good slow. Or, I mean, it's only If you had more points, 25%. Oh, Nayrock. Grave chill. Shackles are up there. The wolves are going to come in with Hal. And they should have enough damage. Stomp's going to come through. No, no way, man. Soul Assumption, nicely done. He was trying to get a kill there with Stomp Double Edge, but... Yeah, it just wasn't going to get it. That is a five-minute Vlads. Wow, okay. Benja's man... Iwo is known as, Radiant I guess, the Black of the South. And that, that, that name might have, I guess, We're the only ones that say that. Yeah, I think Radiant's so, but... I mean, it's not... I think it's pretty pretty on point. With but Benjaz, though, 36 CS of Vlad's at 5 minutes. Not bad. The Ursus only got... Well, I guess Ursus is only one behind, but... Um, 1700 gold for the... Ursus rushing yes. Blink Dagger. I'm almost positive Risk is going to be going for a Blink Dagger, so... Absolutely. And this is a bit more standard for an easy lane... Ursa, since you can get more farm faster, it makes sense to go for the Blink Dagger first because then you can very easily get kills on some of these other heroes that, you know, Vlad's is good and Lifesteal is good because it lets you Roche, but you can't really get away with that early Roche shenanigans and competitive games when, you know, people are actually paying attention to whether heroes are in lane or not. Mm -hmm. So, Haste Rune grab for Joyke here. He might try to go for movement here on Citeral, but nope. Citeral's just going to be able to jaunt away. And, and, they really need Roar. Uh, and even with Roar, I mean, he has mana. He doesn't have mana for it, but even with Roar, you could phase shift that animation. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a quite a long animation. I think... I think you need to... But the, the advantage... That's also an advantage for Beastmaster, though, because you can pretty easily bait the phase Easily bait the phase Yeah, shift. you could just cancel the animation from, like, Axes or mm -hmm. Roar, and then all of a sudden you've got an open opportunity. But he doesn't have yeah. enough mana for the combo, and even if he did, he, I don't think he would be able to get the kill. Maybe, I guess, because Puck is inherently squishy, and he might need another hero there to help out. But I think he needs both spells. Yeah, he needs both spells, but do you think he can get it solo without any other hero? Uh, maybe. If he's if the engagement's All right, well, good enough. Hold on, let me do some mana here. 150 damage plus 200 damage. Uh, plus yeah, he needs some right clicks. I think he need another hero because it's like. Uh, six. I, I think it's possible, but he would need a really really favorable engagement. Uh, and now they're all kind of hovering around the middle. They know that he's level six. Angels come back. I, he needs to go do something else, man. This is not beneficial. Yeah, what is he doing? He's level 5 now. He's just trying to reach level 6 without dying in that top lane. And that's good, but this allows Risk to get free farm. Nayrock is at least bottom and sort of contesting the lane. But the thing is, Benjaz has 52 last hits, and they're Dyer's working on his tower. They're going to board it up right now. Might have been a question Dyer's before because there's no creep wave there on the tower. Attack. I guess the catapult's going to do a bit of work. The wolves are going to be back up again, ready to go. The blink dagger is now purchased up at 7 minutes and 30 seconds for Ursa. Not the fastest blink dagger in the world because guess what? We saw that in the last game. 
But yeah, uh, still up there though. Angel, they're gonna hex up. Nayrock in trouble. Shackles are gonna fly the hell as well. The right click damage. The TP's coming through. Stops does not get off. That would have been huge if they got it. Tokenis is coming through the ether shock. Joy first strike might go. Will he fight it on Jericho? I'm not sure. They're gonna get a double kill for Benjaz. Sandstorm is up. They have no detection. Another TP coming in. This time it's gonna be the Ursa with absolutely no mana. Even if he blinks, he didn't have no mana to Earth Shock. So now he's gonna no deny this tower. I think he waited. A he waited to get the top tower to do that, so that's why he was so late to the party. Grab the Shadow Shaman on the backside. I think we did with Roar. Yeah, he well, he was just like hidden way in the trees back here. Oh, okay, I didn't see him. So I don't. He just got axed down. I think he gotcha. he was trying to get away, and sometimes it just doesn't really work oh. out. Angel looking for a kill on Ursa here. Dream Coil, Dream Coil as well. With Dream Coil, they might be able to get this. He's salving up. That's pretty smart. It's not. Mm, is it gonna be enough? Stop. Really close. Star comes out. Angel gets blown up by the double edge. Now Stid rolls on the way out. No. Great engagement from Shadows of the Past. Wow. Baited, says Risk as he heads back home, limping away. Radiance and uh, that's big. Attack. I mean, he won't get that farm, but that really helps out, well, I think, the side of Shadows of the Past. I'm not sure. It was Narok as well as the Beastmaster. So if they didn't get any supports involved in that kill, that would have been even better. But Joik is doing that thing that Sand Kings often do. They go to the jungle and they stack up. This stack will get him about 1,500 gold, maybe even more, because uh, he stacked it up again. Yep. So this is going to be a lot of gold, man. The Blink Dagger, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, this is uh, the benefit. This is why Sand King's so popular. Not really surprised to see this one bit. He's, I think, a top tier pick, honestly. And even oh, yeah. the Chinese uh, teams think that as well. Absolutely. He's got a really good skill set. Yep. I mean, even we even occasionally see him level Caustic Finale and like lanes against melee carries and he's just got a really good tool set. I, li I like the hero a lot. Yeah, Epicenter is just too good to pass up and because mm -hmm. by the time you get a blink dagger and your epicenter up, you're not gonna have a BKB for the most part, unless no. um, unless it's on like one core or something. So, um, yeah. and really, I mean, the biggest thing you're trying to do with epicenter is kill the supports off. I think so. Yeah, I agree with the that. early levels. I mean, it's it still does enough damage to kill cores as well. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, he's but, not like, level six yet. He's getting closer and closer and closer, but he's got 1600 gold. Like I said, he's getting close to that blink dagger, like you talked about, and. Um, Chicken MC is actually going for mech, which I like this pickup a lot um, on this hero because. Stack the boars now? What? You can stack the boars now. It can make more than oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They changed that in two patches Holy ago, shit. I think. Yeah, that's well, something I've seen. Apparently, before. I don't play enough Beastmaster. Yeah, they, they changed that, and that was one of the things I think Sam talked about a bit um, when we were doing patch analysis for Mad, how they you those, can get two boars. Do those slows stack? I don't think so. I would Seems imagine ridiculous. no. But Stampede top lane, Impale or Burst Strike coming through. There's going to be the stomp. Double edge. Easy cleanup on Zinderlis. The Vistage getting caught out of position. And, well, Narok, he actually went for a casual cloak. And I like this pickup a lot because of the magic oh, yeah. damage on the side of Union Gaming. Obviously, it helps him against Double Edge as well. So Yeah. This is a, this is a smart pickup on Centaur. And I think he does need to get a Blink Dagger. Uh, sooner rather than later, but the other thing is they also have the Sand King, who's going to be oh, getting Jericho, the Jericho, Jericho, why Jericho? Why Jericho? Why, dude? Why? Okay. Well, Risk is going to run away here. They're calling for him. I don't know if they can get this kill. Seems uh, unlikely. Earthshock, Shackles. He stole Shackles. Ben just maybe in trouble. He's going to have to go away. Look at that soul assumption charge, oh. though. A lot of damage. Blink on cooldown for another couple seconds. Another Earth Shock. He's got a man oh! up. Not the best man up in the world as soul assumption was coming to get that kill. Now the birds. The soul assumption again about to go. He did steal it, but, well, he's dead anyways. So three heroes dead, all told. As Shadows of the Past, they lost mid lane Chicken MC by Angel and Sidoral. So now they actually have a kill lead going their way. That was uh, greedy bottom. I'll say that. It didn't quite work out for them. They were just trying to kill the like, and I think they probably could have just kept running. But after the Visage came back over, he ate the first little assumption. Even just the attack. wolves could have killed him, so. Yeah, that was... That was interesting. Greedy. Yeah, I agree. But there's that Blink Dagger, dude. That's it. I talked to Fog, and he's like, man, before you get that Blink Dagger, it's a rough life for our Sand King. After <laughs> that Blink Dagger, it's just consistent gold coming in. Like, kill Radiance after kill, after attack. assist, after assist, after epicenter, Dyer's so... Yeah, you can just... You, if you play this aggressively like Fog does, you can get some incredible setups. Yep. And, uh, you know, the other day, I saw the first four-man impale of, like, a... They were, like, over here by the Roche pit, and there was a four-man impale that literally won them the game. So it's just a really high-impact support at all points in the game, and I think that's another reason that teams are really starting to favor, uh, you know, sports like this that have good CC yeah, yeah. and really strong ultimates. Did you see the? Um, it was, there was a Reddit thread of the Team Dog versus Rock's Kiss fight in the Roach Pit with the Epicenter and Vacuum combo. I yeah, 
Mm -hmm. Disgusting. Yeah, just, just disgusting. good stuff. I mean, yeah. I really like these lion pack supports. You know, Shadow Shaman's another one. He's very good at all points in the game. Even if you get a BKB, he'll get a blink dagger. He'll chase after you, and uh, he can blink in and hex you before you even get that BKB off. So, yep. it's another another hero that I really like, and it's an exciting time to be playing Dota. I really like the hero, where we're at with the hero pools. Yeah, I agree. It was getting a bit stale. I think you and I both expressed that in 6.80, oh, yeah. and we were kind 100%. of frustrated. But we're seeing a lot of unique builds and unique uh i guess drafts coming out from a lot of these teams and i've seen tide hunters i've seen beast masters like we see here today um i mean we've even seen bounty hunters right now we saw in the last game axes a lot um there's been a couple heroes that haven't been picked up that much mostly carries like you don't really see pa too often you don't see Ricky too often you don't see sniper still but that's because i think that right now these lineups favor more semi-carry or at least really early game kind of aggressive heroes which ursa and lycan both are so yeah absolutely and uh well, we haven't really seen this Lycan take too much advantage of uh, the Vlads. He's mostly just been farming with it, although he does have three kills, three assists, and that's in combination with his very good CS. Uh, been able to make him get a Necro, but, you know, the Ursa the one who's going to be the first in the Roche Pit. Now, this is the this is the impact of the change. Doesn't even have to finish the Vlads before he can uh, go in there to the Roche Pit. Though. There is a Wolf Scout in these out. And they know he's, they're doing the dust, this. Oh, they see the it there. Rusk, Risk is going to have to back off. The track's now up here on Last Hit Magic. But now the rest of the squad is here with Epicenter, with Blink Dagger. They, I yeah. think if they engage, they could certainly fight. If if they yeah, jump in with Stampede Union. with Epi, like you said. Oh, how though? Going to work on Risk. He can't afford to die. Dude, these Wolves are way too good still. I think. Mm. Maybe not, but it feels like they are. Yeah, it does feel like it, but... Oh my god, Cinderall jumps in! He's still alive, Risk gonna go to town, he'll get the kill, they got body blocked, and a blink away, well played. Now on the backside, track is up, now Nayrock gonna get shackled as well. Angel right-clicking there, now Risk and Nayrock both low, there's the epicenter, can this turn it around? One kill, two kill, three kill, there's three down for Union Gaming. She can MC though, in a bit of trouble, the axe is not enough damage there. Triple kill coming out for Jericho with those wards. What a brutal fight for both sides. Uh, that was really back and forth, but the big thing is they were able to kill Sidoral before he got off the net oh. initiation, and now he brings down the Lycan throat. Wolves or no wolves. That was a crazy fight. Yeah, that was... Ursa just has so much damage. Yeah, he's very, 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 very scared to deal with. And that's why... A fun hero to play. That's why we talk about Desolator, and we're kind of like, I don't know about that item yeah, I don't, that hero. I don't think it's reasonable. Like, it's just... I feel like there's just no point. Like, you already killed him in three hits. What does it matter? He's gonna get some uh, nice gold from these necros. Oh. All right, <laughs> last hit magic taking the one for the team there. But Roshan did regen up a bit. The mech is now done. They can help out Risk with that mech if they want to. Sidoral's making his way over here. They might try to contest again. They have Dream Claw. They've got waiting rifts, so they've got everything ready to go for this engagement. I'm not sure if they will jump in. They'll throw up the illusory orb just to get vision. Lycan. He's TPing in mid right now. Angel's ready to track somebody if he can. The distance has, of course, been changed, so you can do it pretty much far away. But there it is. Age is now up on Earth, so they might fight this here if they get engaged upon. You won't have much mana to work with, but that doesn't matter, really. I mean, one Earth Shock might be enough here. And they will back off, though, it looks like. Yeah, he has enough for Earth Shock, and that's the big thing. I mean, the other thing is they can also just stampede in there and he can use overpower instead. So they've got a lot of options if there's a fight here. And of course he can just go in and if he dies, he comes back with that full mana. So yeah, yeah. we'll see. It looks like they want to pressure this tower. I think this is the right move. I think keeping the pressure on the Lycan is pretty key. Uh, just make it so that he can never really have an opportunity to just start split pushing down your lands. And there's only one tier one tower despite the Lycan on the side of the Radiant. Yeah. Radiant's middle tower is this under is... attack. Ursa can kill towers just fine also. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not oh, quite yeah. as good, but... Overpower, man. That's Overpower. just... Overpower. And in Rage 2, I mean, he... Mm -hmm. oh, God, that damage is ridiculous. Burrow Strike on the backside and Sandstorm as well. Shapeshift away. Oh, Angel might oh. not be so lucky. He gets Earthshock. Telkinesis oh, actually stuns up Benjaz. They wanted to get it on the Lycan, but they could not, sadly. Jericho looking to Sidoral. engage upon. Blink. Burrow wow. Strike, Sidoral. Look at the damage and the Fable to zap him down. Radiance zap, zap, down. indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Attack. The laser going through, getting that kill. Two down immediately for Union and... Now, Shadows of the Past, they're going to take this free, well, and I guess more than free, Zero One Tower. Radiance Middle Tower. Yeah, I mean, fallen. that's what I was talking about with aggressive Sand King initiations. Yes. They roared Sidoral, and he was, like, the beginning of that fight, they had a great one. And then at the end of the fight, they roared Sidoral, Radiance but he was Middle very Tower far away from everyone else. Roar's range is pretty okay, and he roared him and then backed up 
Sanking blinked over, stunned him, and opened up the opportunity for another kill. And that's two fights in a row that Sidoral just has not been able to use Dream Coil in. And I think that's something they're really relying on to help connect with the damage from the Lycan. Yeah, and Sidoral's been playing really well up until this point in time. It's not his fault yeah. he's getting picked off. You talked about the range on Roar, it's certainly there. And that's why you probably don't see people go Ags too often anymore on uh, on Beastmasters. Blink Dagger's yeah. just a better option, and maybe into like an Ecrobook or something as well, so... There's a lot of options for Beastmaster. It's a very versatile hero, but something when he, somebody we don't see too often. We kind of. I, 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 wish I we think did. he'll be up more because his base damage got a huge buff in 6.81, which sort of pushed him a little bit more towards the mid roll. And Chicken MC has been doing fairly well for himself. Uh, he got solo killed once, but now that he has the mech, he's gonna be building towards the Necro books. He builds up a little army for himself. He's a good split pusher um, by himself. You know, they've got a lot of good options here. I really like Shadows of the Past lineup. I agree with you, and I don't really see, even with Benjaz getting an Ekro 3, I don't see if they can be able to take this game. They have to, I mean, because Shadows of the Past, you got to force team fights, and you're not going to be able to rat fast enough, I think, especially when there's an Aegis and what have you. God damn. Ah, oh, dude. I just said it, dude. I just. You know, the other, the other one that I realized was in its own right. I'm just gonna shoot you with a squirt gun. Well, listen. At least you you've made me aware, and now I'm not gonna do it anymore. <laughs> As I was listening last night, and I like stabbed myself in the eye every time one of you guys said that, right, and then right. Coddle started saying it, and I realized that we had, we'd reached the point of <laughs> <It's become> <laughs> this has to be discussed. Yeah. yeah. I'm so. glad we're discussing it in front of everybody too. Uh, you know, the dirty laundry. Public, you know, we don't have any dirty laundry. We just have all slightly unclean laundry. Yeah, you know? I, that's actually pretty true. <laughs> No dirty laundry. We're pretty open about what we talk about, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, here on High Ground TV. But Angel, uh, I gotta say, man, this this attack. bounty hunter pick has not worked at all. No, he's not playing it like Pycat. Like one track kill, I think, maybe two. Oh, oh, this could be a bit too what are you doing, man? You're you're I think tracked. Realized he was tracked. Yeah, he he. Uh... Oh what? God, Angel! If they oh. can get a kill out of this, though, it might be worth it. Well, I guess they got track kill on. Uh, oh, and they got the tower, so it's definitely not worth it. Shift, shift away. Oh. Roar, Ben Joss, he's got no mana left, but here we go. Earthshock's gonna come in, maybe the double edge. Will they have? Will they have enough damage here? He's at 60 HP right now. Blink forward might be enough in about five seconds. No, he's gone. He is gone. And they actually get a kill here on the Rubik with Sidoral doing the work there with Dream Coil and the Wolves. So, like in, the Lycan uh, Necro units secured that one for him. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Well, oh, that was a nice little counter engagement there by Shadows of the Past. Unfortunately, the they weren't able to grab the Lycan. If they could kill the Lycan there, that would have been pretty big. They roared, they telekinesis. If Joik was alive and he bro strike, that's a kill easy for sure. I think Joik just didn't realize he was tracked. He was tracked. He got tracked like right before he yeah, went yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, he probably went in, and then right when he went in, he was probably like, "Oh dear." Also, something I want to, I want to, like, have you ever played a Sand King? You've tried to animation cancel that burrow strike. It, it doesn't work. You can't really. It's, it's like you have to do it instantaneously. I don't think there is a way to animation cancel the burrow strike. Actually, I'm sure there is, but I'm just not good enough to do it. So I, I've never, Daya's I've never tried really. Because like, usually when you burrow strike, you really want to burrow strike. But like, I, I hit S, like I'm like tapping S just to make sure I get that like that stop animation but it just doesn't work out I, it completes most of the time chat if if you're able to animation cancel the burrow strike please tell me i'd like to know now let us know give us some insight that's one of those things that i'm not able to do sadly i'm sure I, you can cancel almost any spell so i don't see why you, you wouldn't probably can I, the cast point is fairly low so maybe it's probably just a lot harder because i guess in, unless the cast point's like zero then you should be able to cancel yeah it. you're absolutely right yeah i don't think it's a zero cast point. i don't think it is either Smoke of the Sea Gang, Rubik, Angel, has, like, the lowest, Sentry, like... they might see him, they spotted him out, stomp, oh, missed, oh, Sentry there, shot, Burrow Strike, right. Angel, well, Double Edge, you're dead, that's gonna be, well, the Axe is getting the kill there, I hope the Ward Trap not exactly on Chicken MC, now Sidorol coming in to blow up Joik now, is there a stomp potentially, Double Edge first, Narok getting low, the right clicks, Benjaz gets roared up, now the Fable coming through, they track up, they stole track, well played, the Mech as well, but do they want to fight this, Chicken MC getting low, he will fall on the backside, here comes the Ursa, Jericho, he gets the Jackal off, but the right click is there, the Fist is stunned, Soul Assumption shadows the pass, they're losing this fight, they lose the Aegis, four down, might be another one, because of course that Aegis just coming up there, Illusory Orb, Maybe use a telekinesis, not gonna work out. They'll try to fight, but a double kill for Zinderliz. And now the last one to survive and may even go down. No, last hit magic will make it out alive, so. What a disastrous fight there for Shadow of the Past. I'm surprised that one's so bad. Yeah. They, they just, I mean, the biggest thing is they had a huge engagement and Ursa was so late. He was so late to the party. And you know, we've been BMing it all game, but he bought a Desolator.
They've been listening, man. They want to prove us wrong, I suppose. I mean, I I don't really understand Pushing, why you can just buy a BKB. I, I, that's what I thought I was going for when I saw the Mithril Hammer, but I guess yeah. it's for you can take down towers faster. Armor is going to be not as big of an issue, which there isn't that much of, but the thing yeah, that's really like, important. He just gets no. owned by stuns and. Actually, and... Zitterless has 25 armor because of Gravekeeper's Cloak, so. Uh, <laughs> He also has his and scepter, so he's got three. And a those. buckler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's pretty farmed. It's a very farmed visage. Yeah, he's picked himself five kills. Biggest thing, honestly, is he just hasn't died very much. So yeah, one death. Yeah, he's really done well, I think, with the visage stuns with the familiars. Mm -hmm. Oh, the bird stuns have been great this game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, I think this. I think uh, Risk needs to buy a, a BKB though. I, I agree. Shadow well, Shaman destroys the the Ursa. Yeah. Absolutely. This is stuns as well. Like when he came back up, he got stunned immediately, held him in place. I feel like this is just like despite us, honestly. Yeah, probably is. I say nice things about them, and they just they go and do this. I I, I don't know. I flamed I flamed shadows in the past a bit in the past couple of days. So, yeah. uh, according to the chat, you can cancel burrow strike instantly. Like you can you have to, you can cancel, but it's like you have to hit it instantly. So yeah, I think it just has a it a probably very has a very, low, short very low cast, cast point. point. Yeah, I don't know exactly what it is, but I've been, I've been called bad as well, and I will not disagree with you. So, um, that's fair. That's I mean yeah, like you said, unless it's got a cast point of zero, it's you know. All right, so I, we learned something new today. Good we stuff. Learn, there. Do we learn every day? That's our. That's what we try to do. Where do you? I, I guess it's on the Dota Radiance Wiki where you learn about cast points. I don't know. I just looked on Play Dota and it's not on here. I'm pretty I'm sure surprised. it's on the Dota Wiki. Maybe I'm wrong though. I'll look. I'll inform you. I think cast point your, is the I'll same be your per eyes hero. And ears. Maybe it's not like just per uh, ability. It's per hero. Well, per why are we talking about this? We should be talking about the game, I suppose. Well, they're all farming up right now, and Joyk is. Creating his own little dance party in the corner. <laughs> do 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 do. In fact, <laughs> yeah, do 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 do. do. I'm not really sure what's going on over there, but um, Sidorol went for Necro one. I feel like this is okay because they need maybe. Yeah, they need you, it. you usually see one other Necro on the team when you have a Lycan, just to get as much pushing as possible. Uh, Benja's Necro three is done. His next item, who knows what it'll be? Looks like it is going to be a BKB, which we don't see too often, actually. Stampede's going to go. They want this kill here on Sidoral, but they can't get him. He's got that DD rune as well, which is not the best thing to fight into. So, for Shadows of the Past, they actually might be down here. It's actually even in gold, so never mind that. Experience, pretty it's much even really as well. close. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's close a very, very game. close game. So, good stuff coming up from both sides here. Hmm. Moving forward... I think Shadows of the Past need to try to set up their own engagements uh, a bit cleaner. They've sort of gotten jumped on by Sidoral, and I think they need to be on the offensive with the Sand King and the Roar. I mean, Roar is a good counter-engage spell, but Sand King can get a little messy if you try to counter-engage because you don't really get Epi off usually. Yeah, I mean, like, when you have an opportunity, like, you know you'll have maybe two seconds to channel that and jump in. You've got to take yeah, that opportunity, better. but... It's, it's hard to do. It's hard to kind of judge when that's going to happen because as soon as you channel it, all of a sudden they might back off and then it becomes very frustrating because you just wasted epi and it's on cooldown for, you know, however long it's on CD for, which at this point oh, wow. is 120 seconds, so two minutes. So that's mm -hmm. a bit of time. It's not the longest cooldown, but it's not the shortest either. So Necro 2 now done for the Beastmaster, but at the same time, the Lycan will pick up his Necro 3 and BKB's flying out to him as well. So some decent items coming out from both sides. All right, well, it looks like finally this Earth is going to be going for a BKB. It's just been a matter of time, I think. Yeah, I really wish he went that first, but... I do too, but, I mean, it's still going to be high impact at this point. Because, I mean, I guess you have to you can make the argument the later that you get it, the better it is, which is definitely true. Um, but, you know, they possibly would not have lost that earlier engagement Radiant's with the BKB instead of the Desolator. Right. They're going to smoke up now, and they're going to try to find uh, Roshan, which... Oh, oh this is gonna Nerok gets good. him! Angel may be in trouble, double edge. Look at that damage, but they get the wards off. Angel's still alive. The epicenter coming through. Dune work at the supports. Zinderlis pops the mech. Did they get the Aegis? They denied it. The puck denied the Aegis. Zinderlis in trouble still. Still alive with Gravekeeper's Cloak. They need access. They need something. One more right click will do the job. Double kill for Chicken MC. Nayrock so low. Will they get this kill? Absolutely the waning rift. Benjaz. And of course, that puck, the last two alive. Now gets Telekinesis. Look at this right click. Is it enough? The wolves. They're going to try to finish off Chicken MC. The burrow strike. Zinderlis. 
Ball in trouble. Going to try to jaunt away. No such luck. It is a team wipe coming out. Union lose everyone. She got to see why did you go that way? No. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, Lord. Well, Ooh. I think he walked up there, and then he hit one of them, and he realized that they were there, and he was it's not like, happy. Oh, that. dear Lord. Yeah, yeah. There was a really nice wall of centuries here by uh, Shadows of the Past. They were completely ready. You can see two of them went up right before that started, and Nayrock was able to get a good initiation right here, which was a really key part of that fight. And uh, Chicken MC is writing LOL on the map. I think he realizes the, uh, the, mistake the, error, the yeah. error of his ways. But they did get a really good fight there. Yeah, yeah. that was that Unfortunately, was Ursa died. That's a bit, that's been unfortunate, but... Yeah, he'll get the BKB recipe. He's only Mithril Hammer away from that. The Aegis got denied. You could argue that was maybe worth it for Union. The gold graph has dipped down to zero slightly. The experience graph is down to a 1,000, so it's almost even for the most part. I mean, Union, they lost their whole team, but they're still very much in this, this game right now. Yeah, absolutely, and both teams have a really good shot at this. I mean, on the one side, we've got the Lycan, who's great at killing the buildings, great at ratting it out, great at split pushing. On the other side, we've got an Ursa, not quite as good at the split push, still pretty decent though. I mean, with the Desolator, it will help him kill the buildings faster. But really, he excels at nuking down heroes as quickly as possible. So if uh, if Shadows of the Past get another fight like that, I think they'll be in good shape to perhaps push down one of these Tier 2s and maybe even the Tier 3, mm -hmm. depending on the amount of heroes they kill. But Lycan going to be looking to just push out these side lanes, get these Tier 2s, and he really has had no luck in that regard. Yeah, he's... I mean, you, you, you're so used to, I guess, seeing these heroes, especially Lycan, just kind of take towers and He's been kind of, I think, not necessarily... He's been a little cautious, I think, and that's fine. He has... He could just kind of send his wolves in a Necro 3, but he doesn't want to give up away free gold and experience because of that. Now with the Necro 3 from Puck, maybe they start pushing or split pushing a bit more. I would like to see bots on one of these two heroes if they really want to go full rat, but I'm not sure if that'll be the case. Uh, that kind of play style me. has kind of, I guess, dissipated yeah. since 6.80, so... I really like this play, though. I, I've seen this so often. M move the Lycan onto a hero and see if it's following. And uh, they threw the sentry down, but just a bit out of range of that Lycan wolf. So they're scouting risk out very well, and he'll blink away. But you know, Lycan wolf now cannot follow any longer there. So Yeah, but uh, well, moving along here, they've got a pipe on Nayrock. This will help them quite a bit against Sidoral. Yeah, I, I would, I'm interested to see where we go. From Maybe that's why you don't go BKB MC. early, is because you have that pipe. But... Yeah, but that doesn't really help you. Like, you're not, you don't care about the damage from the magic damage. You care about the fact you can't move if you're the Ursa. These Vistas familiars are going to be annoying as hell. Oh, they, they will provide enough space for this tier 2 tower to go down. They'll pipe up. They actually want to re-engage here. Stampede's going to go through Burst Strike. They're going to find Angel. Can they find anybody else? Shapeshift BKB oh, now. Joy getting caught up. There's the Roar and Benja is really necessary. The mech is up. Nayrock getting low. Illusion Orb going to fly plus the Dream Quell. The waning Rift. Joy is going to go down as well as Nayrock. He stole Shapeshift, but they're losing this fight. Shadows of the past. Chicken MC got caught in the War Trap. It's a double kill for Benja. They've only lost the Shadow Shaman. Maybe they're thinking about pushing into the tier 3 tower as well. A really strong fight from Union Gaming. Yeah, and that's sort of what I was talking about. Like, again, we don't see the epicenter. And a lot of the gold that Sand King has dedicated has been towards team fighting. He bought himself a Veil of Discord. And he did use the Veil during the fight. You can see that the debuff's still on right. everyone on Union. But without the epicenter going off, that's a lot of the magic damage they're hoping to get that they're not really using. I mean, you might get a little bit of extra damage out of the Wild Axes. It is composite, so it's not all of it. But... I don't know, man. These engagements have just been a little bit sloppy by Shadows of the Past. Yeah. And the biggest, the other big thing that happened there was Nayrock blinked in, they stampeded, and then it was really weird. He like couldn't find anyone to stomp. He was running out for the Visage, and then he stomped, but the BKB Lycan, that didn't work. Like He was getting so. chased down by so many things, whether it was the right click of the Lycan or, I guess, even the Necro Units. They're going to take a free Tier 3 tower here. Beastmaster will buy back, and... This is rough. I don't think they'll lose Raxus here. They might, though. I mean, these Vistage Familiars, the it's, Lycan Wolves. I think they're going to. Oh, but Earth is going to jump in, throw up the Earth Shock. Phase Shift coming out the Lycan. He's going to go with the Shape Shift here. He wants this Rax. Telekinesis is going to go. Do they have Roar? Not for another 18 seconds or so. Lycan? Well, that's going to be two Lycans, essentially. The Shape Shift going now on the Rubik. But they will take the melee Rax. Benja's got to back off now. Shape Shift about to wear off here, at least for a couple of seconds. Zinderlis, though, he's going to be the Black Sheep caught out of position. And Stampede going yet again, but this time not helping them out. Burst Strike in the back. So they caught out Benja's. He will fall. Two down. Rubik gets a double kill. They lost that melee Rax, which is unfortunate, but at least they defended pretty successfully otherwise. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... 
This is still a blow to them, but I think it's not really a death blow. I mean, it's only one building. It was, it's going to be the whole lane eventually. When they try to push out, they'll probably lose it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I don't know. I mean, there wasn't too much they could do in that situation, to be honest, to really hold that racks with the way the previous engagement went. And I think they've got the right idea here. It's time for them to move forward. It's time for them to just start nuking down some towers and killing people. Yeah, the Lycan's down for 35 seconds here. He does have buyback, so he's not too concerned. Uh, Joyce tried to burrow somebody on the backside and missed, though. But, yeah, I mean, I'm, su I'm surprised, actually, you talked about it. They haven't been more aggressive than right now. I mean, they yeah, had it's, to it's time to the pedal the metal time, man. We were just talking about pushing, but then they pushed as a team with that second Necro book. That's what they needed to get going for them. And once that happened, all of a sudden you saw how fast those buildings dropped. So Tier 2 goes down, a Tier 3 and a Melee Rax goes down. They'll take the Tier 2 for Shadows of the Past, but they wanted more than that, clearly, and they'll have to back off and continue to farm. The problem with continuing to farm right now, though, is Ursa going to be able to do enough in these team fights. I don't know how yeah, don't late... Know. If the game goes late, do you really favor an Ursa in this situation? No, I don't think so. I think Lycan... Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of tough to say, to be honest, because yeah. on the one hand, they have Roar, yep. which is the ultimate stun, you know, goes through BKB. So even with Lycan's BKB, he's still going to be able to get killed by Ursa. Um, I, I don't, you know, I'm actually, now that now that we're thinking about it, I'm kind of torn. I think I wouldn't favor it just because the Lycan is way better at split pushing. Right. Basically, I think the goal here for Shadows of the Past is to ball up, push down a lane, kill the tier 2 tower, take a fight at the tier 2 tower, and rax them. But Union Gaming might just not let that happen. I mean, they've got the Lycan who can just pretty easily split push down the lanes. He's still got room for a TP scroll, and uh, he's going to be going for an AC next, so he's really going to be killing buildings fast. Yeah, and then he might even go for a death. I don't think he will. He'll probably go for a badge or something like that, but he certainly could go death if he wanted to take down towers in a matter of a second or two. But I kind of agree with you, but I also think that you have to keep in mind too is that Union do have decent team fight. That's what won them yeah, in the fight true. last time around. Is they had decent team fight and Dream Coil and Winning Rift are very, very important for Sidoral. Like if it hits those abilities on you know two or three heroes, it's going to be maybe devastating for Shadows of the Past. BKB is going to have to come online and Nayrock is building just that. Chicken MC might go for it next. We already have one of the Ursa shape shift. Now they blink forward. Benjaz getting caught out. Is their damage not enough? It looks like the right click he got body blocked by his own Necro units. Doesn't matter. War in on Angel. Blink stop comes through Angel. He will be the one to fall he'll be the martyr for his team and that's unfortunate but at least it's not of course the lichen going down who tp'd away out of harm's way god that cooldown for a shapeshift at level three is disgusting yeah it's uh it's really good it's so low right. but uh, uh, that's a step in the right direction unfortunately that pickoff doesn't really mean much at this point there the lanes are way too pushed in for shadows of the past really take advantage of that and this and we talked about how much this game means man like a loss for either of these teams is a big blow, especially to Union, I think, more so than anybody. For Shadows of the Past, they might be able to afford one or two losses, but if they get swept in this series, it's it might be really tough for them to make the playoffs. I, 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 yeah, I, I you know I would be interested. If someone in the chat wants to go and check out the standings and figure out what the situation is for Shadows of the Past uh, as far as getting to the playoffs, that would be cool. And uh, either like send it to me on Twitter or something, but... Um, I'm interested to see where that is. I think I think if Shadows of the Past win this 2-0, I'd be very confident in saying they're secured for the playoffs. But if they get swept 2-0, uh, I think it gets pretty hard. Yeah. Then they're at 6-8. and eight. The Reminder that there are 16 games played. I sure still have 8 to play, and they're 3-5. and five, And they could certainly Radiant's go on a tear and start, win, start winning some games and uh, essentially secure the playoff spot for themselves. But mm -hmm. it's going to be difficult, I think. And... It really comes down to how Shadows of the Past, I think, and Iceberg perform. Because Union Gaming, I don't want to say they're out of it, but it's it's just as hard for them, I think. So everybody yeah, is TPing away, realizing that they attack. are not in the best position. They did have this ward here coming out from the uh, the Dire team, so I'm sure they spotted it out. I'm not sure if it was a smoke or not. I didn't see um, for Union Radiant's Gaming, but now they're going to push down this tier two bottom, attack. which is exceedingly low. Yeah. So we're at. I mean, we're at kind of a standstill in this game where I think one team. I think honestly, the pressure is on Shadows of the Past to take to take the game to Union at this point. I think if Union just stand here and the game stays like this, they're going to be at a huge advantage in you know 15 minutes. So, I think it's up to Shadows of the Past to make moves here. Yeah, I think it comes down to smokes. I agree. Um, we might see Union smoke and look for a kill, but I think it's more likely that Shadows do it because they just have they have better, I guess, initiation potential with their lineup. So. If they smoke up and they jump on the team of Union, 
they probably win that fight. But if they sit here and defend like you were talking about, they'll have to deal with two Necros, Visage Birds, uh, Wolves, and Howl on top of that, which is pretty freaking gross. So um, now with the Shiva's Guard as well for this Lycan, that's a big pickup too. That gives him a decent amount of armor. Um, obviously, the, the ore is really good. Tax slow is so nice. You throw up the um, the active, the uh, Arctic Blast. I couldn't think of the name for it, but maybe a fight breaking out here potentially. No, it looks like no. Dyer's top barracks are under attack. Top racks are exposed and taking heavy hits from this melee creeps. Oh god, they're gonna lose this range racks. They're going to lose that range racks. That range racks. Yeah, and like I was saying, that's just like top that's just gonna happen at one point when they're trying to defend or trying to push out a lane. Like once you lose the melee racks, it's just impossible really to keep the range racks alive. And yeah, they lose the. This is just looking fallen. bad for Shadows of the Past. I think this game has gone too late for them. The tier two tower falls pretty much to Necro units. They didn't want to use the fortification. I can understand that completely. So now you in gaming have complete map control. They might want to take down that tier two tower mid before they go into Roshan, but this is going to fall so quick that it might not even matter. Uh, you could see Rubik's going to scout things out with the the wolves, but it, it's probably too late at that point. They've got to jump in now and do something. I think. Yeah, they would need to move right now. I think it's just taking too long. I know what's happening with the bear, but has that's it. The that's the age. It's going for Lycan. Oh, there's a cheese still on the ground. Sidoral just canceled the TP also. Yeah, they just took the cheese up right there. So uh, they got Hex up now at Rubik, which is nice. But now with an age, just the cheese going the way of the Radiant, a tough fight for Shadows of the Past is going to be even more tough. So yeah, who pick, who actually has the cheese? Uh, it is oh. Angel. He picked it up, the Bounty Hunter. Well... We'll see. Shadows of the past. I think this is their last shot. If they lose this fight, the game's over. And it's still an even goal lead, man, though. That's the that's the. I mean, the game thing. is super even. Like, I think it just comes down to execution once again. And Nayrock right now is not at the fight. Joik is not at the fight. They need to get over here. And this is just, I think this is Lycan and Necrobooks, essentially. And I, I kind of was feeling like Lycan was not doing as well in, in this patch. And I, I guess there's statistics to back that up, but... Yeah, Benjaz is. I he's mean, still a strong hero. He's still, yeah, he's still strong. You've got especially to deal when with him it gets early. this late. Yeah, when they it gets just this didn't. Late. Deal, they didn't deal with him early. I think is the problem. You really need to deal with him early, and they just didn't do that. So, I think they didn't the press their game. advantage with the Ursa as much as they probably should have too. Especially yeah. since he went for this Desolator build, I think he should be split pushing down the lanes and trying to kill towers. I think one. I mean, there were just one or two fights that Shadows of the Past could have performed a bit better. And I don't want to like. I'm not like trying to throw a eulogy for them just yet because it's it's not. They have definitely not back. lost yet, but I mean, look how fast these towers die with all Dyer's these Necro units. This is going to be the push, I think. They have that. to push uphill right now, so this is a bit of an issue. Nayrox very far away, though. And he's pushing out top real quick. He's going to make his way back home. He really wants that Dyer's BKB, and he's very close. But the wards are up. They're going to force the issue now. The Veil is up, and Epicenter would be huge here for Joy if he could hit it. Oh, my God. 1-800 uh, Merlini, ladies and gentlemen. That's it right there. These pauses are brutal. They really well, are. Uh, according to KJ, nine is the absolute minimum number of games to win to be considered for top four realistically. That's so they have fair. to win three games. That's fair. Yeah, but I mean, like, they've lost the last series, uh, 2 and they might lose this series. They're very close to losing this game, so... Uh, I mean, the playoffs are nothing to scoff at. You have a chance to get some decent money if you can move through the playoffs. I mean, like, 1000 or yeah, 2000 The playoffs is, uh, is all best of three, too, so one single elimination... Yeah, so... It's a pretty quick trip through there, and... Uh, Wait, is it? Well, Shadows of the Past... I'm pretty sure it's single elimination. All right, okay. I'll take it. Um, Shadows of the Past still have to play... They only have one more series after this, so they have to win. And it's against NAR. That's not going to be easy for them. They really need, like, one or two wins. That's all they really need. Yeah. Actually, I mean, if KJ says you need nine, then they need three, but... They, this this game is actually more important than we thought potentially. I don't know. Stampede's gonna go through. Nayrock looking for a potential target, but Angel he's got that BKB ready to go. They'll roar on Ben Jaws, but Nayrock already falling low. Nice back to keep everybody up. The Dream Coil on and two. Joy comes in the epicenter a bit late. Nayrock is the first to fall. The mech goes through. Now look at Risk doing work. Zinderlas he's the next target, but now the Lycan's going to work. He's got the Aegis. They buy back on Nayrock. They stop up on Ben Jaws. The Ward's doing work. They've already taken down most of the tier three in the racks. Joyk is going to Sandstorm. They've bought back on pretty much everybody. Sidoral will jump away. He'll blink away as well with that jaunt coming through. Now the Telekinesis. Benjaz, no shapeshift. 
No Aegis, it was oh just you. He's got shapeshifted five seconds. Can he make it out alive? Blink, does he have the Earth oh, Shock? One more Earth strike. strike, he gets him. He's dead for 78 seconds. I'm sure he has buyback. And they took down the range Rex as well, and that tier three tower. Oh man! So Shivas did some unreal work against Ursa. Yeah, it did. He was attacking so slow out of overpower. That's a huge item pickup. Really good choice here. Uh, for the weekend, they're gonna force his buyback, but they can't really force they have to. anything. I mean, they have to go in here. I think even if they buy back, they just have to go in. And Necros are gonna be up ready to go as soon as he. Buy back, buys back, so... I think they're just in here, man. They gotta... I even... The thing is, is like, is losing a Rax here for UG even that bad? Uh, I don't know, but meanwhile, fight happening. Stampede, and of course, the stomp going through, absolutely obliterating that poor Rasta. Burst Strike is up, they get another one. That'll be Angel Hill buy back. Benjaz got roared, taking a lot of damage. He can't afford to fall now. Dream Quill coming in. Joy getting low. This is the death push we were looking for. The stop up from Narok. They get him. He's down. Cinderall trying to get away. There's the face shift. What else is happening on the backside? They're getting wrecked by Necro units. They've got to back off. Now Risk getting low. He'll fall as well. Down for 96 seconds. They hold. The only two buybacks are on the Radiant side. And that's it. It looks like Union are probably going to take this one as they march straight down mid. Huge mistake there, I think, by Risk. He let the Puck live. Puck was phase shift, and he walked away. I think Radiant's you had to kill him there. Tower has fallen. I don't know if he could have, even if he tried. I'm not sure if the Blink was I mean, ready. I think you have to, you have to like, go for Try it. it yeah. came back and kill them all. Yeah. That's, so. That is rough for Shadow That fight looked that, really good for Shadow It Shadows did. It did look really good. It's the Necro, man. Like, the Necro units, the Wolves, and Howl all together, they that just, creeps. like, they siphon you so low. It's just, like, hit after hit after hit. It's just like a war of attrition essentially just kind of like so ever so slightly but all of a sudden this massive amount of damage coming out so yeah Dyer's i don't know it's gonna be rough now to defend I, they're, they're definitely gonna lose this mid racks here they're gonna burrow in zinderla is not taking that much damage they'll throw up the lincoln spear on him as well the grave chill on joy somebody's got a maelstrom i'm not sure who soul exception flying in on chicken i've seen he's hexed up as well shackles he is gonna fall he's down for 94 with definitely no buyback Jorix is gonna get tracked up. There is one more hero alive. That's the Rubik, but they'll work on this last set of racks even without the like, and they don't need him. Dream Coil now on Joey is tracked up, and Sandstorm Burrow Strike coming through as well. That'll break. Last hit match gets some trouble. He will fall. That is another team wipe. Well, at least everyone's dead. And Shadows of the Past are forced to GG, a game that they needed to win. Now looking a bit dire for them. No pun intended this time around. And Stomp is up. Double edge. Narok. No, that will not do it. You needed to do that a bit earlier, my friend. So. Union Gaming, they'll take the first game, 1-0. Well played. Yeah, and I think it just went a bit too late for Shadows of the Past. Like you were mentioning, they had a couple engagements that probably could have gone their way uh, if they played a bit differently, but a uh, tough one for Shadows of the Past. Looked good through the beginning and the mid game. It was fairly even, but it looked like they were taking the advantage, and in the end, man, King Rat. King Rat, indeed. That, that's just like in doing work. They didn't shut him down, and it's just something that they couldn't really deal with, so... That's the story of Game 1. The story of Game 2 yet to unfold. We will take a quick break, and it'll be the last game of the evening. Remember to follow us here at Twitter.com slash American Dota and Twitch.tv slash American Dota League, as well as check out the website at AmericanDotaLeague.com. Guys, we'll be right back here into Game number 2 in just a second. You guys stick around.